Hello everybody and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to share with you some points on analytic procedures for evaluating a PLS model. So, first of all, you need to understand that we have three different types of variables in the context of PLS SCM. The first type of variables are reflective measurement models. The second type of variables are formative measurement models. And the third type of variables are single item constructs. Now let's have a look at the characteristics of the first type of variables, which are reflective measurement models. So basically there are five points here that you need to consider. Number one is that indicators or the items of the questionnaire represent the effects or manifestations of the underlying construct and underlying construct here means the reflective measurement model. Number two is that causalities from the construct to the indicators. So as you can see here, we have three items or three indicator variable or three indicators and the latent variable is here and the causality is from the latent variable to the items. Number three is that the relationship between each indicator and the construct is the correlation between them. So these values here, A, B and C are the correlations between each item and the latent variable. And basically these values are also called factor loadings or correlation weights. Number four is that indicators are interchangeable and in other words in, in case that you detect any non-contributing items in this reflective measurement model you can simply delete that from the model as long as the construct has sufficient reliability of course. And number five is that indicators are expected to be highly correlated to each other. So these indicators X1, X2, and X3 are highly correlated. Okay, the next type of variables are formative measurement models. And basically there are four characteristics for these type of variables. Number one is that causality is from the indicators to the construct. So you could see that basically these arrows are running from X1, X2, and X3 to the latent variable that has been measured formatively. Number two is that the relationship between each indicator and the construct is the regression weight between them. So these values A, B, and C here represent the regression weights between the items and the latent variable. Number three is that indicators are not interchangeable and each indicator for a formative construct captures a specific aspect of the construct's domain. So in other words, if you delete any of these items, basically you are losing some information from your model. So you should be very careful when it comes to dropping the items from a formative measurement model. And number four is that indicators are expected to be lowly correlated to each other. No collinearity among the indicators should be observed in other words. So these items should not be highly correlated otherwise we will face some problems in the process of the analysis. And lastly, with respect to single item measures, you should know that basically you can consider these type of uh, variables only in situations when all the following three criteria are met. Number one is that your sample size should be less than 50. Number two is that pass coefficients of 0 0.3 and lower are expected in your analysis and number three is that items of the originating multi-item scale are highly homogeneous for example your chrome box alpha is above 0 0.9 and the items are semantically redundant so possibly meeting these criteria all of these criteria at the same time is quite uh, unlikely and i think it is very difficult to publish a paper when you have a sample size of less than 50 okay now let's have a look at one example in this slide basically we have here one variable one latent variable that is satisfaction with hotel and this satisfaction with hotel variable has been measured reflectively and also formatively so y1 here is a reflective measurement model and y1 here in this uh, model is a formative measurement model and you can also see that uh, we have used three items to provide measurement for satisfaction here and also another set of items for measuring satisfaction as a formative measurement model. 
as you remember in the previous uh, slides i told you that basically the items of the uh, reflective measurement model are the manifestations or the reflections of the main construct so in other words when you are satisfied with a hotel you will appreciate that hotel when you are satisfied with the hotel you look forward to staying in that particular hotel and when you are satisfied with the hotel you would recommend the hotel to other people so that's why you could see that the causality is from the latent variable to the indicators or the manifestation variables and here you would see that basically uh, the direction of the causality is different here you see that when the service of the hotel is good you are satisfied with the hotel so good service causes your satisfaction when the personal is friendly then again you will be satisfied with the hotel and also when the rooms are clean again you will be satisfied with the hotel so here you would see that phrasing the formative items and also the reflective items is also different in this particular example and note that uh, if you look at this central circle as the main construct here that is satisfaction with hotel and if you consider these three shaded circles as the items of this reflective measurement model the point here is that if i delete any of these items and in other words if i delete any of these shaded circles uh, still the main central circle is covered with the other remaining two items and that means that if you delete any of these items uh, still you would be able to explain the uh, latent variable quite well and here if you look at this uh, big circle which represents uh, satisfaction with hotel as a formative measurement model the point here is that when you delete any of these items you would see that a big portion of this uh, big circle is not covered anymore so in other words when you delete any of the items of a formative measurement model you would see that basically you are you are losing some information okay in this slide also you could see that uh, basically we have a model here a pls model and note that we have three latent variables in this model one of them is latent variable one and as you can see it has three items and this latent variable is a formative measurement model so here you have one formative measurement model the second latent variable is latent variable 2 and again it has another three items so this is a reflective measurement model because the direction of the causality is from the latent variable to the items and here we have another latent variable which is latent variable 3 with two items and again because the causality is from the latent variable to the item so this latent variable here is also a reflective measurement model so one formative measurement model and also two reflective measurement model and note that the relationship between the latent variables that have been represented by these uh, blue arrows is called the structural model so this area here in this trapezoid is called the structural model so in any pls model we have measurement models in this case we have one uh, formative measurement model and two reflective measurement models as well as a, a structural model that is the relationship between the latent variables and when it comes to analyzing this pls model what you need to do is that you have to consider evaluating the reflective measurement models and formative measurement models uh, as the first step and then after the measurement model evaluation is complete then you will be able to um, consider analyzing or evaluating the uh, structural model all right and now here in this slide you can see the example that i'm going to use in order to show you how a pls model is specified and evaluated so here we have four latent variables the first one is communication skills that has been measured formatively 
The second one is creating value that is a reflective measurement model. Here we have satisfaction and motivation and both of them have also been measured reflectively. I have also introduced one control variable to this model that is age. So age is an observed variable that serves as a control variable in this model. Also note that in this example, I will test three hypotheses. Two of them are directional hypotheses and basically they are mediation hypotheses. So the first one is that uh, communication skills influences motivation through satisfaction of the people. And the second one is that creating value influences motivation through the satisfaction of the people. Also, we have a non-directional hypothesis and basically uh, to test this hypothesis, what we are going to do is to run a permutation based multigroup analysis to see the effect of gender on all of the relationships within this model. Okay, in this slide, I have also provided you with four reasons that justify the use of PLSSEM methodology in estimating our example. So the first one is that I would like to test my model from a predictive perspective and in other words, I will run PLS predict analysis. I have one formative measurement model in this example. I also would like to use the latent variable scores to conduct uh, structural model robustness checks. And also I would like to do mediation analysis. So in case that you would like to uh, get more information about the conditions that favor the use of PLSSEM methodology, I would recommend you to watch episode one of this tutorial. Another important fact that I need to highlight here is that there are some assumptions and considerations in our analysis. Number one is that I have already taken care of all of the missing values. So there is no missing values in my data set. And in case that you would like to know how you can take care of uh, missing values in PLS analysis, just watch episode four of my tutorial. I have also checked the existence of multivariate outliers in my data set. And basically there is no multivariate outlier right now in my data set that I'm going to use to show you how the model is estimated. So in case that you would like to watch a video on how to detect multivariate outliers in the context of PLSSCM, just watch my uh, episode two. Also note that I have done power analysis to ensure that the sample in my analysis is adequate and I have no problems in terms of uh, power analysis in this example. Again, in case that you would like to have more information about uh, power analysis, please watch episode four of my uh, video tutorials. Another point here is that during data collection, I provided the participants with a symmetric and equidistant five point Likert scale to rate the items of my questionnaire. So again, in case that you would like to have more information about symmetric and equidistant uh, Likert scales, please watch episode four of my video tutorials. And lastly, I have taken care of the common method bias in this analysis. So in case that you would like to have more information about common, uh, common method bias, please watch uh, episode three in my video tutorials. So these are all the assumptions and considerations that we need to understand before we will be able to specify and estimate our model using a smart PLS. And in this slide, you will see the entire process of testing the model. So we start with reflective measurement model evaluation. That will be our episode six. Then we will continue with formative measurement model evaluation. That will be our episode seven. Then we will continue with evaluating the structural model to test our H1 and H2, the mediation hypothesis, plus um, running PLS predict analysis. That will be in episode eight. And then in episode nine, we will do a permutation based multigroup analysis to test H3. And then in episode 10, I will show you how you can detect nonlinear relationships as a robustness check in PLS analysis. Also note that in some other videos, I will show you how you can perform IPMA, Femix PLS, and also PLS post analysis. 
okay so thank you very much for watching this video in the next video that will be episode 6 i will show you how you can uh, evaluate reflective measurement models